Welcome back, everyone. And today we're going to do kind of a follow-up to the previous lesson, which was about uh, uniform buffer uh, objects. Um, someone commented, w y, sorry, YC Wong actually pointed out that there was a small mistake in my explanation because even though all the rules are true, there is one exception um, where I said a float and then a vector you know, you're, the the um, the float is going to take up uh, s you know the whole sixteen byte chunk of data in uh, GPU, and because the vector three is treated as a vec four, and it's true in most cases, but apparently there's one case where if you have the vec three at the start of a sixteen byte uh, chunk, you can fit a single piece of variables at the at the end with the final piece because even though a vect3 is treated as a vect4 as like he pointed out as an alignment it still does use up um uh, 12 bytes of information so if it's the first 12 bytes of information and there's a 16 byte chunk we still have room for a flow a, a, uh, a boolean or an integer so there is that exception. I went to look it up, and it's a kind of an optimiz optimization thing done by the compiler. Uh, so I had to go. So I'm, I went and fixed the code up to illustrate it. And he actually sent me a link that um, illustrates the code, like to, to prove his point. And he was right. He's absolutely right. And thank you very much for pointing me out because that kind of error would be very hard to debug uh, when you don't realize that uh, data is not being, you know, interpreted right. Um, so one of the things to to illustrate his point across is um, I uncommented this section. I think I also changed it a little bit, which uh, when we create a shader and we prepare a uniform block, um, we're going to go get the size. So this way we can compare it with our calculator. So I did that one change. Uh, so we can actually compare it. So this way you can guarantee um, now in, in our UBO object uh, I have our get size and before it was just regular integers uh, that I was returning but now I'm actually returning a, uh, an array of two values uh, the first value is your alignment and the second number is your size in most cases alignment and size are practically the same um, that's the reason. That's how I interpret it when I was reading um, about uh, UBOs. Like I said, I didn't know, I didn't see that one exception. And when I went to Google it, apparently th the float vector vec three is not equal to vec three and float. It's kind of funny. It's the, it's kind of like the only exception I can find that the rules don't exactly follow um, the way I explained it. So for the most part, alignment and size are the same. It, except for VEC3. There's a slight optimization trick uh, done. So we kind of have to compensate for that. So now, so I kind of change this to, uh, so I can actually have this 12 value um, when I'm dealing with VEC3s. Um, and here's the calculator function. And I kind of fixed it up a little bit. Uh, I think I had added a couple things like uh, this condition um, gets changed. Uh, the, the handle of VEC3. Um, and then everything else is kind of just, uh, you know, just using the size, the correct sizes at the right time. Uh, yeah, so like here, I'm actually using the, the alignment value. And then pretty much everywhere else, I'm using the actual size. And like I said, most of the sizes are the same value as the alignment, except for VEC3. So when it comes to VEC3, I'm actually going to do a subtraction of 12 to the chunk instead of 16. So this way, when we come up with, in case the next one is a float, it shows that there's four bytes left in um, this chunk of data. So that's our calculator, all fixed up. I took out the the, the rounding off because it's, it doesn't seem like we need it because every time you the GP when you ask the GPU for the actual size, it kind of doesn't it completely ignores. Um, being rounded up by this, you know, um, the six, 16 bytes. So I left it off and it seems to work just fine. Um, I don't think it's really a requirement. I just added in there just to, for correctness. Um, but it seems to work just fine. Uh, and if not, 
uh, if there's a problem, it, you can just end up just uncommenting these four lines of code in case I'm wrong again. But uh, so far, it works fine without rounding up to the near 16. So that's our calculator, and everything else pretty much stays the same. So we're going to our viewer, and we're going to do our scenario A, which is what I think I have in a previous lesson, and that's where, um, sorry, YC somebody pointed out that this and this are not equal. They don't equal the same amount of bytes on the GPU. So here's or here's a float and here's a VEC3. And let's see, let me just double check the shader is the same way. Ooh. Yep, float, VEC3, scenario three. So if I go over to the browser and refresh, we have a float, VEC3. Um, you know, it's the size of four, but it takes up 16 bytes. We have an offset of 16, it takes up 12 bytes, and the chunk size ends up being 12 bytes. And this is what it will look like in the buffer. You know, the 16 is filled up by the float, and the second chunk, because it overflows, uh, is treated as just three. Um, and we calculate it at the size of 28 bytes, and the GPU actually tells us that it actually is 28 bytes. Perfect. That's exactly how it's supposed to work. So I'm going to take away scenario one, and this is the special scenario for optimization that the original code would actually give, give us the wrong value, and it will kind of screw us up in the long term. So we're going to comment that out, and then we go over here. And we got scenario B. Oops. Go back to the browser, refresh. Now we have VEC3 and float. And here's our VEC3. And since we have space, we have um, that our float. Because the, because the way he the way he was explained is that alignment you need to check if there's enough room for something. Even though VEC3 will technically only takes up 12 bytes formation, it requires at least 16 bytes of space. So that's why if there was a float there, and when I go to check the alignment, the only there's only 12 bytes left, but the alignment is 16. So that's why it would overflow to a new chunk of data. Uh, in the case that the float three is at the beginning, is the first part, the first variable in your chunk. That means the next item, let's say if it's a single align, it's a single n of, of alignment, like it's just four bytes, it then can't fit in here. So it has an alignment of four and has a size of four, and we have and we calculate it with the fix. Mind you, I had to do the fix, and we calculate sixteen, and the GPU also says it's sixteen. Uh, originally, I would say it was um, 28, and the GPU would say it was 16. So with that new fix, with that uh, op, um, that exception kind of built into the to the function, actually gets everything just right. So uh, we can check out more scenarios. So let's see. So we're gonna do scenario three. You know, I just did a couple just to make sure everything was working. Uh, I had a couple of bugs here and there doing the doing the changes, so I, had, I kept making more scenarios to see if I could screw up the code. And so far, I managed to get everything working just fine. So we're gonna do vec3, vec3, and float. Refresh. So we have a vec3. Remember, a vec3, even though it has an alignment of 16, it fills in 12. So when the second vector came in, it realized there's no room because it, 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 there's only four bytes left and the alignment is 16. So I said, well, screw it. We've got to go to the next chunk. It's got to overflow to the next section. So it fills in to 12 and our float's 12. We calculated as 32. GPU also confirms it's 32. So that works as well. So we're, we're, we're checking the overflow to see if there's something greater than a single uh, N worth of data. Um, let's see. So that scenario worked out really well. Now this one is just going to see, well, you know, just double making sure 
you know, we didn't break anything. Because I think this actually, some of the changes I did actually broke scenario D. But now scenario D should work just fine. Just two floats. Refresh. Got two floats. But for size is eight. GPU again also counts as eight. So, you know, they all fit in that one 16 byte uh, space. Uh, what else we got? And I think uh, scenario C, E, whatever. And this is just a VEC3. And just, just so we can see what a VEC3 looks like by itself. Um, boom, boom, there we go. Fresh, go back here. And, you know, it knows a VEC3 is just 12 now. Uh, like originally before, I was treating everything as a VEC4. So originally I said 16. Now it's saying it's 12. It's the only one there. It knows it's correct. So by check by checking the GPU, we can then confirm that we're pretty much calculating everything correctly. Um, now, is the place in it correct? I'm pretty sure it's correct, but at least we're getting the right size. So, but I, I'm pretty sure that our visualizer, uh, so we know how how it looks in memory, um, so we know the offsets are correct um, or, or, or sound. And I think that's it. So I'm just going to go put it back to how it's really meant to be with our uh, four matrices. And, and again, that will be the final test. You know, just now, now I pretty much tested every type. And refresh. Here's our first matrix. And here's a second matrix. It's a it's a uh, it's a matrix four by four, so that means we have um, you know four pieces of vec four, and again 128, 128. So we're good. Um, that's it, and that is uh, the fix I did. And uh, want to say thank you again to YC Wong for uh, bringing it up, bringing this up to me, because like I said, this is this will probably be a bug that. It would take a long time to uh, find the actual answer that there's a problem there. So thank you a lot. Thanks for all the documentation that you sent me. Uh, you guys can read our little conversation online if you want. Um, he, you know, he was very helpful. He, he created a, a, a an example so I can see it and to prove that these two are not equal. Um, they are actually not equal at all. So, um, again, thank you. Uh, if you ever see a problem or a mistake that I've made in any of my videos, please tell me. I will make a follow-up video to explain it just like this one. So, um, that's it. Uh, sorry for the misinf misinformation, but hopefully now uh, you guys got the right information. Uh, the source code will be updated uh, on GitHub so you can get the new function. And um, that's it. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for uh, for watching.